Hey, it's Amber here at the B Channel, back with another video for you guys. This week's topic is the side of weight loss no one told me about. 10 things that you may struggle with. But before I get into today's topic, I would like to talk about um, where, where I'm at with my progress. So, we're now at the point of um I'm about six weeks into my maintenance. So I'm maintaining it around one seventy two or one seventy three, which is a couple of pounds less than my goal actually, because I wanted to be one seventy five originally, but I feel good about my progress and I just feel like now I'm finally I finally found a range a calorie range where um that's comfortable and I don't I feel like I'm not eating too much but I'm not eating too little. And um, I bought a few new outfits that actually fit in my size, so it really, and um, um, other things that I need that I, as far as underpinnings and, and such. <laughs> but I feel as though just buying those new outfits that actually fit did so much for my confidence because wearing clothes that don't that don't fit is no fun. After a while, I was like, no. So I decided that I would give away some of the, the regular items to one of those clothing bins um, that you see on the street. And you just put the clothes in the bed, in the bin and they um, collect it. And um, the, the nicer items, I decided to see if I can consign them on swap.com. So we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know how that works out. And the nice thing about it is even if you don't, you can't get anything, any money for it, you can still... Um, give it to charity but the thing I like about the site is you can get a store credit like to use on their site or they also will allow you to use to transfer or convert their store credit into a PayPal so it can be PayPal money or it can be store credit for them for their site so that's the nice thing I learned about swap.com as well and they um they send you a package to put your items in and then um, they let you know if it's worth anything and then you can choose whether to get the items back give it to charity or whatever you decide to do so um that's just something i've been working on and it's just really been kind of cathartic to get rid of the clothes and find new clothes and be adventurous and try new colors and actually be able to fit fit into some fun items that i've never been able to wear before such as like a true skinny jean and um, just wearing different colors and silhouettes and trying different things out. And it's been really fun and interesting. And um, really, I feel like I've gained a great deal of confidence over the last couple of weeks. Um, especially being able to have the clothes, some items that actually fit me now. It's just been really exciting. So I just wanted to share that with you guys and let you know that it's possible. to. Um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It seems dark for a while, but... Um, in due, in due time, in God's timing, you will get to a better place. I'm not saying I'm perfect or I'm totally in love with myself yet, but I'm getting there. It's happening. I feel the change happening and I'm proud of myself for it. And I'm getting, I'm, I'm finding the balance that I desire in, in my life. And I'm, feel, I'm feeling a little bit more centered, a little bit more calm and a little bit less anxious, but it's through a concerted effort each day. I'm doing the work that I need to do. And you can't get there without work, people. You got to maximize your potential. You got to maintain a certain level of excellence. And you just have to put your best foot forward every day. And it's, simple, it's as simple as that. There's no no a quick, no get um, fit quick scheme. There's no rocket science. Just trial and error. Finding out what calorie range works best for you. What exercises work best for you. And this week, I really enjoyed um, doing restorative yoga, yin yoga. I even tried a little bit of kundalini yoga. I tried soca dance, which is a, it's like a Caribbean Zumba. It's really exciting and interesting um, type of dance. So I'm trying to just try different forms of the things that I like so I don't get bored. And just switch things up as far as trying to eat different fruits and different um, varieties of things, such as black cherry yogurt. 
versus just eating strawberry or peach. I've really branched out tremendously with a lot of things, I feel, since I started. Because at first it was like I was just eating the same things all the time. And now I just feel so much better about trying different things. And I just feel like I'm in a better place overall. I'm, I'm not as anxious as I used to be. But um, it, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> anyway, on to today's um topic. The first uh item that I would say that people don't know that you struggle with when you try to do this weight loss thing is um anxiety and I feel like a touch of depression. And um I say that to say that you know, you get overly anxious and you 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 begin to obsess and you ruminate about things and that other people don't think about and you just everything is just so serious and if everything it's just the weight of the whole situation feels so heavy that you can get burdened down by all the pressure and and um sometimes you can get a little blue and it makes you a little dark that's the way I feel anyway. I feel like it makes you a little dark and it's like you don't know what to do with all these feelings. And you didn't expect all these feelings. And it's like, you know, you would think, well, weight loss, oh, yeah, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be satisfied and everything's going to be all good, fine and dandy. But that's really not the case at all. Um, sometimes you have dark moments and you get anxious and it's hard to deal with. But I feel like. With the right tools, talking to a therapist, meditation, yoga, and just really, it's about cognitive reinforcement of positive things, positive affirmations, and things of that nature. It really go a long way. So it's really about re retraining your mind, renewing your mind daily about the truth of life and the and the reality versus what which the um the constructs that your mind may cook up or where the places where your mind may take you. So you have to learn to control your mind, not let your mind control you. That's the biggest thing I've learned. Um secondly, confidence and self esteem. It can really take a toll on you. Like because when you're fluffy, you know you you've learned you learn to accept it and embrace yourself as you are. And you love yourself as you are. And you've learned to dress that body. But now you have to learn how to dress a whole new body and love a whole new body. And get used to it and accept what you see in the mirror as for what it is. And um, I recently read an article in Cosmopolitan by Gabrielle Sidibe. And she was discussing this issue. How everybody wants to tell you don't lose too much weight and how'd you do it was it surgery or or diet pills and was it um intentional are you sick any myriad of, of questions that i received as well um any anything along those lines is just offensive to me and um it's, it's really hard on your psyche so i learned that from her article that confidence is really based in persistence so you have to be persistent in building yourself up because people are going to maybe inadvertently sometimes but most of the time because they don't know what they're do they don't know what they're saying a lot of the time they're going to um cause your walls to fall so you have to constantly build yourself up rebuild your wall keep building the wall up over and over again on a daily basis even it's like um, you just have to keep on doing the work to rebuild your confidence and build your self-esteem and just affirm yourself because it's not going to always come from the outside and you're not going to get what you're seeking from the outside. You have to work on this thing from the inside out and just really talk to God about it and really just work on yourself daily. It's not something that happens overnight, but in due season, you will be... You will be more confident and you will have better self-esteem but it, it takes a long time to work on it especially when you're used to being fluffy and then one day you just you're just fit and you're just um even more fabulous in a different way so you have to re really recreate your self-image 
Like you have to get used to your recreated self image is what I'm trying to say. Like it's um just really think about how you view yourself and think positive thoughts and accept yourself the way you are. That's the biggest thing that I I learned about um confidence and self esteem. Is you have to be persistent. So um next body distortion. You will see problems when there may not be any. Like you might obsess about your the little bit of back fat that you have or your thighs and or you might obsess about your stomach spilling over or you might think that you have too much arm fat. And um really it's not that um anything is wrong. You just want something to be wrong because it's comforting sometimes to have something to work on and then once you get to that place there's nothing to work on. So it's kinda like you're floundering because you've achieved everything that you want to achieve as far as losing the weight and then it's just little little nitpicky areas that you feel are, are still problems because there's always gonna be some flab left over when you lose a considerable amount of weight. Like with me I lost ninety pounds. So you know there's gonna be some flab but is not as bad as it could be if I if I was like really morbidly obese. So that's one thing I was grateful for. So it's like you get this um body distortion and you, you see things that aren't there and you just have to tell yourself that I'm okay, I'm enough the way I am. God made me this way, he loves me and you have to be okay with that. Learn to be okay with how you look and accept yourself. Um next you constantly think about and you're consumed by society's thoughts about the weight loss because people are constantly questioning you and interrogating you about the process and what happened and how you got here and why you did it. And it's just all consuming at times. So people don't think about that, the ramifications of that, the implications of losing weight and how. Because because people are constantly asking you, it's constantly on replay in your mind. Everything that you've gone through, everything that you're doing, the whole situation is just constantly on replay. So that's something that people don't um, think about. Um, next, you feel alone and feel like nobody understands because it's like things that matter to you or things that you ruminate on and fixate on seem insignificant and small to other people but to you they are everything because you worked hard and you know where you come from and to you little things could derail you and people won't understand because they don't see it as a real like a disease to me I'm an obesity survivor I am like an overcomer and um sometimes it feels lonely to be in that place because people just see they see the process they don't see the struggle they don't see the things you go through behind the scenes to get to this place so it can be lonely because everybody doesn't have that same determination and willpower and discipline and um level of scrutiny and the level of perfectionism that that you place on yourself sometimes when you're trying to get to a healthier lifestyle and a healthier weight. And um, it can be hard for people to understand. So it's something, sometimes you feel isolated. You feel alone. You feel like nobody gets you. It's a hard place to be in, but that's when you just seek God in those dark moments and those quiet moments when you think nobody understands. God will understand. And he will meet your every need. Every need you have, he will meet it. And exceed it exceed your expectations super abundantly so remember that ephesians three twenty. he's able to do more than we can ask think dare dream or imagine or hope so just remember that um you also lose sight of the the big picture like the longevity how long you, you start to think about how long can you maintain this and you feel like there's no purpose once you reach the goal but there is a purpose Focus on other aspects of your life that you were not able to focus on as much when you were worried about your weight or when you were overweight. It seems like your life opens up so much more once you lose the weight. And then you, it's like you lost the weight, so it's like now what? And you're just left with that that big fear of the unknown. Like, how long can I do this? How long can I keep going? 
It's like you're you're seeking the why of your lifestyle change. You're like you you're you're have to, you have to constantly remind yourself of the why and why you're doing this, and then that gets you back in, in on track, and you get yourself back in check on the moments when you forget why, and when you want to overeat, you remember I don't want diabetes, I don't want high blood pressure. I want a long life. I want to enjoy life more. I want to do fun things. And just remember the reasons. And don't lose sight of the big picture. Keep things in perspective. That's what the whole the whole issue is sometimes. It's hard to you lose sight of what you're doing, why you're doing it once you get to your goal. So remember that. It's important to keep that in mind, especially when you get to maintenance. But also all along the way. Why are you doing this? There has to be a reason. A personal reason that will keep you in line. Um, next, you lose interest in other things. You start to obsess about weight loss. You start to obsess about maintaining. And it's like you have to find ways to distract yourself. Like play games. Like go out with your friends and family. Watch TV. Watch, I mean, read magazines. Find other things to focus your energy on, even if it's just coloring. I don't care. Adult coloring, whatever you have to do, you have to find a way to focus your energy on other things and divide your time evenly and equally and on other things besides thinking about weight loss and um, not obsessing. That is one of the hardest things to do, but it's the healthiest thing to do to, to work on yourself in that way and not obsess about it. Um, next, you have misplaced anger. I feel like you, you have a, it's almost like, I don't know. It's just like you have this, it's either you're angry at yourself because you could have been here so long ago or you're almost, sometimes it's like you're angry at yourself because it's, you're get, you get frustrated because of the life and you have to figure out, you're still trying to figure out the balance and you feel like you're constricted now. You feel like there are things that you you want to eat or whatever that you can't do. or you. It's like, it's hard because you have to find something that works for you that you can maintain for a lifetime, not for a season. Not for a week, a month, or a day, but things that you can do to sustain yourself, to sustain this place of maintenance and healthiness for your life so it's it's rough but i think you can get there if you just work on the source of the anger and try to control yourself in that way have self-control manage the anger it's not it's not it's not wrong to be angry it's just you have to figure out why you're angry and how to cope with it and it's, it's a valid feeling it's it's not something that you should be ashamed of or something that's a that's like um a crime so next um you get bored with food you get in a rut because uh for me i've learned that psychologically routine is healthy and it helps me to understand and realize how much i'm eating and then i can just like be on autopilot for the most part if I'm eating the same thing all the time, it's easier. I don't have to think about it. It takes the guesswork out of it. And I don't have to be all like like fixating and ruminating, obsessing about what it is that I'm eating. I can just say, okay, I'm having Raisin Bran. And just have that, have a cup of that every day, every day, every day, every day. But then you get bored and you just, then that's the source of anger and frustration. Because you're like, I need to eat something else. What else can I eat? That's healthy, that's good for me, that tastes good. And it's a struggle because... I mean, there are sure there are recipes out there and things like that, but then you just it just gives you too much anxiety to have too many choices. So it's just easier sometimes to do to just settle into a choice and just stick with it. But sometimes you stick with it too long and then you just get bored. So just um you have to work on that too, not being bored. It's it's really hard. It is hard. Um the next thing I would say is the last thing is the exercise time and the calorie count that's appropriate for you to maintain your um your weight loss because sometimes you, you'll keep losing if you don't eat enough and 
sometimes you exercise too much. So it's like, <clears throat> I found for me the sweet spot is, um, try to, I try to exercise somewhere between 10 and 30 minutes a day, depending on what, how much time I have, or sometimes 45 minutes, but I found that now 30 minutes is a reasonable amount of time to keep myself moving. Somewhere between, I think my sweet spot is 30 to 45 minutes. Now, if I'm crushed for time, I'm going to do like 10 to 15 minutes and just call it a day. That's all I'm, that's all I can do and just be okay with that. And, um, I feel like that's been an okay amount of time as far as, um, my journey to maintain and, um, Eating, I found that sixteen to eighteen hundred calories is ideal. Staying on the sixteen hundred side, maybe even fifteen ish, you know, that helps to stay in the range of one seventy ish, some below one seventy five. I've been hovering around one seventy two, one seventy three. So the ideal range is thirty to forty five minutes exercise, sixteen to eighteen hundred calories, and um, take my little t- tablespoon of apple cider vinegar every day. Drinking two. About two and three quarter liters of water. Um, not drinking the three anymore because that's too much. So you just gotta realize what works for you and what doesn't, and just it's a game of trial and error for the most part. For everything that's involved in this journey, it's about trial and error. That's the biggest um, principle that you have to learn, really. Just try, try things, and if it doesn't work, try something else. But to reiterate. The side of weight loss that no one knows about that you may struggle with, you struggle with anxiety or depression or both, confidence and self-esteem, body distortion, constantly thinking about it and consumed by society's thoughts about it because people keep talking to you about it, um, feeling alone and like nobody understands, um, losing sight of the big picture, the why of why you're doing this lifestyle change, losing interest in other things because you begin to obsess about it. Uh, misplaced anger, uh, boredom with food, and finding the ideal calorie range and exercise time so you will not keep losing, but you will just maintain. So those are the things that I've struggled with. I hope that something I've said has been helpful, and I really hope it blessed you and that um, you can learn something from this video. And just let me know in the comments below how you felt. Give me a like, a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel thus if you haven't done done so thus far. And I appreciate your time and I appreciate your support as always. Thanks for watching my video. Can't wait to see you guys next week for another great video. Um please uh comment below and you know give me ideas if there's some uh videos uh topics that you want me to discuss. Let me know that as well. And also remember that you can follow me on Twitter at B channel 27 and um thank you for supporting me and uh I'll see you guys next week peace and blessings bye bye